Good morning, um, my friends from Kenya, uh, more specifically the Actual Society of Kenya. Um, I'm Tansviche. I'm speaking to you from Singapore. And as all of you all will know, I'm the current uh, president of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. I'm delighted to speak to my friends in Kenya. I had hoped to go to Kenya in December this year. Uh, and in fact, I've contacted Moses Mutili already earlier this year. But unfortunately, COVID-19 uh, prevented uh, that uh, because it was supposed to be a holiday for me and my family uh, to the safari parks in Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, but I'm delighted to be here uh, to speak uh, to your theme, the new normal. Uh, navigating the crisis. Uh, and I have um, uh, uh, some slides. So I would like to share my slides so that we could uh, uh, guide the conversation yeah, um, uh, as we go along. Uh, so this is my cover slide and I got to shrink. Uh, I believe you can see me. I got to shrink my uh, video uh, so that it doesn't take up too much space. Uh, and uh, as I said, um, uh, delighted to hear to talk about this theme, uh, but I thought that it would be useful for me to talk about uh, a bit about uh, myself. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, as many of you know, uh, I grew up in Malaysia. Uh, my father, uh, I'm Chinese. My father immigrated uh, from China in 1926. Uh, that is nearly a century ago, when he was four years old, and he passed away about. Uh, three or four years ago. Um, and he came with his father. Uh, and I grew up in Semenghe and I went to the school, uh, uh, Kajang High School. Uh, it was a very small village. So I understand rural life and village life very well. There was no water, no taps, uh, and no electricity in the first six or eight years of my life. Yeah, uh, I went to and graduated from the London School of Economics in 1981. And it was the first uh, amongst the first, there are three of us who qualify in the same year, in 1984, uh, cohort of Malaysians to be the British Fellows of the Institute of Actuary Stand. Yeah? And after that time, for another 15 years, there were only three other Malaysians who qualified in Malaysia. Uh, so it was a, a very rare occurrence that a Malaysian or a Singaporean uh, qualified as an actuary at that time. But in the first decade of this century, uh, 2001 to 2010, 40 to 50 Malaysians qualified in Malaysia. And in the last 10 years, about 80 to 90 qualified. That shows that how quickly uh, it can grow exponentially. I, I became a CEO of Prudential in Singapore in 1994 at a fairly young age, uh, the British company. Uh, and I uh, worked in technical areas before I became a CEO. Then I was a regional MD. I left the Prudential in 2001 to pursue my passion and interest uh, in psychology. I went to do a master's in psychology in Columbia University and I worked in the area of psychology um, for four years. Then I returned to the insurance industry, uh, but a very different type of uh, company. It's a social enterprise, it's a cooperative uh, owned by the uh, very large uh, National Trade Union Congress of Singapore. And eventually I became the group Chief Executive overseeing yeah, uh, about eight to 10 different businesses, including supermarkets, childcare centre, uh, property companies, loyalty card companies. Yeah. I, I got elected to the council in 2017. Uh, it was unplanned for, uh, but I campaigned for it. And then the president in 2019. And of course, I'm delighted uh, to be the first Asian uh, president uh, of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. Uh, your title is uh, called uh, The New Normal. Uh, uh, that suggests that, uh, that we have been through a very big inflection point, uh, a big crisis, uh, and therefore normality has become reset. Uh, but I want to assure you, uh, mankind, uh, Africa, China, uh, Europeans have gone through big inflection points. Yeah. Uh, this was a slide which I used uh, uh, 10 years ago after the uh, global financial crisis and it was called life in a new normal because after the global financial crisis, there was a new normal. So we need to have a sense of perspective, uh, but that is not to underestimate uh, the importance uh, of the inflection point 
we are going through. So I'm going to show you two slides. Yeah, this slide uh, was a slide which I produced in 2017 as a basis for the new strategy for BSMD, uh, vision, skill sets, mindsets, and domains. Uh, but bear in mind, at that time, I was not even a president then. I was preparing a presentation for the Singapore Actuarial Society. And I wanted to capture the need for actuaries and everyone who is a professional to respond to the requirements of the digital age and the fourth industrial revolution. Because the digitalization fundamentally changes the way industry operates and the domains we operate and the way we go about it has to be very different because it's a networked uh, and globalized society. So it's digital, it's networked, and it is a machine platform and crowds. All these are slightly technical words drawn from the literature uh, of digitalization. Yeah? So as a result, our traditional industries, which is based on a print-based society, will be altered and disrupted over time. But it was not just about digitalization, but it was also about increasing longevity. Therefore, our currency of knowledge has to be updated all the time. And it was also about mother nature because climate risk and climate uh, and planetary degradation was increasing and, and, and most laws was increasing the pace of digitalization and globalization in 2017 and before Trump really uh, came into effect was getting a more and more globalized world. Yeah? But of course, the uncertainty unraveled uh, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Yeah? So in that context, yeah, uh, 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 in that context, VSMD came about. Um, then uh, COVID-19 hit us in March this year. And there are some Chinese saying here, because this is a slide which I took from a Chinese presentation, which I've not taken off. And my apologies for that. But, but COVID-19 came along and brought many uncertainties and fault lines in our society uh, to the foreground. Firstly, you got COVID-19. And at the same time, there was a breakdown in globalization because China and USA uh, disengaged on one another. And globalization took a retreat. And therefore, problems which we face globally will be more difficult to solve, whether it's climate risk or financial crisis. Yeah? So there's an issue. At the same time, you will recall, before COVID-19 came, there were severe bushfires uh, in Australia and California. There were uh, droughts in Africa and parts of Asia. There were hurricanes and typhoons in America uh, and, and in Asia and polar caps were melting. And the global markets were getting increasingly volatile. All this impact us economically and financially and impact our work and our skills nets, skill sets are quite necessary, quite relevant to solving some of these problems with the exception of the East-West uh, globalization, which is a, largely a political risk. Yeah? And, and the last item was the declining interest rate because of the need uh, to have easy money to, to, to have a fiscal stimulus has led to negative interest rates, which is a new territory uh, for actual science. Yeah? How, how do we have compound interest with a negative interest rates? Uh, if you follow it um, logically to its natural conclusion. So these uh, are what I call deep uncertainties. Yeah? So what, what we need to ask ourselves is, uh, what are we, who are we, and how do we evolve? Uh, essentially, actuaries are people who look into the world and ponder at problems and how to navigate those problems and how to solve the problems in a practical way. And that started uh, with the time of Edmund Haley, James Dodson, uh, John Grant. And they became uh, able to predict mortality. Uh, they were able to look at morbidity, risk and uncertainty. And it gave us what we call risk and probability models. And at the same time today, we are looking the world with a lot of problems, with a lot of unknowns and a lot of uncertainty. So how should we respond? And this is a slide which I've used in the original VSMD, which is really a response to the digital world. 
but I'm going to skip this quite uh, clearly. It's clearly about mastery of data, it's clearly about relationship with technology, and it's clearly about diversifying our, diversifying our skill set. But a lot of it has to do with our mindset, uh, which I shall summarize uh, uh, in the next two slides. Yeah. So, so the strategy of the IFOA was born uh, based of, uh, the, on the basis of the last uh, few slides. We know that our skill sets needs to be modernized to include data science, um, machine learning and AI. But more importantly, it's about mindsets. Yeah? What are the mindsets we need in order to bring our vision of actuaries being relevant, being impactful and influential to life, not just in our traditional fields, but in new fields. Yeah? So in that sense, uh, a very quick uh, or short announcement I could make in terms of skill set is that we are going to introduce a fellowship in banking, we are going to have a certificate in climate science, and we already have a certificate in data science, and we are going to have increasing optionality uh, and modularization of our associate syllabus and choices as we go forward, because we are going to modernize the way we offer education to our members. But more importantly, and you have, would have heard me say it in my speech uh, at, in a presidential address and elsewhere on YouTube or LinkedIn, is that our traditional values, which are very important to us in many of our reserve roles, traditional roles of accuracy, cautiousness, consistency and reticence needs to stay and continue to be nurtured. But as Reddington said, we must create new room for other values, which include curiosity, adaptability, and the growth mindset. And the growth mindset includes uh, perseverance, uh, experimentation, and a spirit of continuous learning. And these three, regardless of the literature you read about digitalization, are absolutely necessary because skill sets are not permanent, especially with increasing longevity and the pace of change. To maintain the currency of a skill set, you have to acquire adjacent knowledge and knowledge at a distance and join the dots. And that requires a spirit of curiosity, adaptability, and a growth mindset. But the second of set of problems is not about digitalization of the fourth industrial paradigms. It is about a uh, fourth industrial revolution. It is about uncertainty. Uncertainty in a sense that our problem is no longer a systematic problem. The system is a problem. Uh, the economic system which does not give us resilience uh, on uh, income security and health security. Uh, our, our insurance system which does not deliver value for money because of mark, uh, because of the way of products uh, are sold. Uh, our, our regulatory system uh, which for good intentions uh, try to protect solvency actually make us pass increasing risk to our customers. Uh, those are what I call systemic problems. If you adopt a systematic approach, you are trying to do things accurately. But if you are trying to change the system, you've got to be imaginative and think outside the box and have the courage uh, to express our views on a public interest point of view but we do it with judgment. We do it with judgment. So in other words, uh, it is equivalent to being a ship. We could be turning the handle, but a ship is going in the wrong direction. Someone must say, hey, look up at the stars. The ship is going in the wrong direction. You could be very accurate and cautious turning the handle in the ship, but it's not the best thing to do. But we need different roles for different parts of the profession. So this is a slide on a growth mindset, uh, which I would not uh, expand too much on. Because one of the specific things your organizer asked me to do is to talk about navigating in an uncertain world, in a VUCA world. So today we have the first felt VUCA, which is globally felt VUCA. There has been a lot of VUCA locally. You have African VUCAs on Ebola. If you live in a village uh, connect, uh, close to Ebola outbreak or wars, uh, uh, conflicts, or you could have a Tiananmen uh, uh, VUCA because it's a period of uncertainty and I know I, when I was a child at the age of uh, 10 uh, there was a riot simulation and there was a period of volatility and uncertainty for me but it's not global but the pandemic crisis is global and it's the first felt global VUCA in our lifetime. 
I think that Second World War was probably like this too, but it was not in my lifetime. But in a world of VUCA for organizations, uh, and there are many attributes uh, of how you survive as an organization. Uh, and these are the 10 items which I collated uh, when I spoke uh, to a town hall of uh, Manu Life Senior Leadership uh, in Asia. But I just want to pick up two words here, the reflexive mindset and judgment. Uh, the rest of it are probably attributes of high performance of a team. But the reflexive mindset and judgment is something you really need uh, in a volatile uh, and uncertain environment. So typically, uh, in, in, a, in a business plan, you would have forecasts and plans with KPI, sales number, expenses, you have a roadmap. And if you have scenario planning, it's because there are uncertain outcomes. Uh, but COVID-19 changed all that. No companies, including IFOAs, business plan in January this year are relevant because we don't even have examinations delivered in the same way and people are not even going to the office uh, in most parts of the world. So, so in, that scenario, in that situation, KPIs and roadmaps and forecasts are not very useful. Scenario planning are not very useful. And reflexivity is the important one. How we change the way we respond to an external situation. So I can tell you what reflexivity is. Huh? This is a Western way of describing reflexivity, uh, developing alternative perspectives, uh, trying to be unsettle your comfortable comfort zone and use dialogue and connect with people. But the best one is the one I quite like, which is Eastern, uh, which is what I hope you know who Bruce Lee is. He's a Kung Fu master who died at the age of 33 or 34, and he was one of my heroes when I was a boy. He said that be water, my friend, be water, my friend, because the water will get to his destination, regardless if there are stones, there are boulders, there are trees, there are roots, or there are bellies, or there are gorges, because the water will just flow and get to the bottom. And that was the essence of his philosophy and his martial art, uh, his philosophy of mixed martial art, of the shortest and the easiest distance, but in a flexible way to a destination. So in many ways, uh, in a VUCA environment, we have to be reflexive. We have to behave like water. Uh, I have a friend uh, who had a VUCA when he was a young boy uh, in Vietnam, and he wanted to be an X-ray. Uh, but Saigon fell. Uh, the Americans were leaving through helicopters. You have seen the video. Uh, you can see bombing everywhere. And he was one of the boat persons whose boat came to Southeast Asia and he could have died, but he did not die. But today, uh, he's a very successful actuary and a group chief, as, group chief executive of a large organization in Asia. So he has the ability to be reflexive, yeah, because the traditional way to be an FIA was changed the moment Saigon fell, yeah. Uh, and there are many stories like that. Uh, many Indian CEOs who are born in India who went to America become CEO of very successful technology companies, all came through a school of Jugat leadership, uh, which is very similar to reflexive leadership. Judge, reflexivity and judgment are slightly different. Uh, I, I can't talk too much because these are very big subject. Uh, uh, there are different types of knowledge, right? There's epistemic knowledge, there's technique knowledge, uh, but, but judgment belongs to Matisse and Phronesis. It's about Timing. Phronesis is about timing. Metis is about contextual intelligence. Synesis is about joining the dots. Yeah. So uh, you, 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 some of you may know how to uh, shepherd a flock of sheep, or you may be a fisher person. I can fly kites. Uh, I can bicycle. Uh, but you can't, learning physics or learning zoology is not going to help you because it's based on feel experience. Uh, the fisherman knows when to take up his line. The kite person knows when to, to pull the kite to make it rise faster. And even you bicycle, you know how not to fall, but it's not, it cannot be written down. Yeah? That is partly technique, but it's also partly the ability to judge. Yeah? Uh, because judgment is, uh, comes from experience and experience comes from bad decisions made in the past. Yeah? So this is a, a very important point. 
about judgment, yeah. And 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 data analytics, if you use data science, it's not going to help you in this, yeah. Data science, you, you got to have a certain sense uh, to read context, yeah. Read context. This is for organizations uh, and for individuals. Joshua Cooper Ramon is one of uh, the chief executive of Kissinger Kissinger Associates, and he's a very well-read person. You may want to choose his book. Uh, and then he talks about reading, sensing. Uh, tribalism and networks in a, in, in a cyber world. But it's not just in cyber world, in a jungle, uh, in a village, uh, to have a sense yeah, of danger or a sense of opportunity. It's not something you could teach, uh, but you can narrate and show the way. Yeah? Uh, once you are aware of it, uh, you will know about it. Yeah? Uh, this slide is from a professor in London Business School, uh, Andrew Lickerman, who is uh, he's trying to teach judgment by saying that it's so intelligence but not quite it's eq but not quite it's risk assessment but not quite it's a bit of each yeah it's about personal qualities yeah so so self-awareness is very important yeah in navigating uh in the crisis in the new normal uh, and he had a chart and that was for the COVID 19 where do you get your information do you trust how much do you know uh, given that the precedence is changing everything how do you feel and what are your biases? Uh, do we, uh, what are your choices? Do you have choices? Uh, and, and, and how do you make decisions? Are you too fast or too slow? Uh, he's not saying that there is a specific answer. He's saying be aware of it. Yeah, be aware of it. Uh, Robert Greenleaf is one of my favorite authors on servant leadership. And he talks about uh, intellectual capabilities uh, and he said a leader uh, must have the sense of the unknowable uh, must be able to prepare for the unexpected and foresee the unforeseeable uh, i have many stories which relates to a uh, situation like this uh, the author himself was able to pull an emergency cable uh, in a in a in a new york underground when there was a problem because he has anticipated something like this will happen in his 40 years of traveling in a New York subway. So he was prepared for the unexpected. You can prepare for the unexpected. Uh, it may not happen today or tomorrow, but it will happen. Uh, a house on fire, uh, uh, someone in a, uh, in a swimming pool, uh, or someone whose heart becomes weak and collapse. So those things may not happen next year. But it will happen in your lifetime yeah? and, and there are situations like this in your workplace too so so if you if you look at about it so as we go to the future of uncertainty uh, accuracy cautiousness consistency or reticence are very important within our system uh, and we should work on those but curiosity adaptability and a growth mindset very important in the digital world and in a world of the fourth industrial revolution. Courage, imagination, and judgment, extremely important when there is deep uncertainty as we face today. Uh, because it's not about accuracy, it's not about cautiousness, it's about courage, imagination, and also using those with good judgment. So our sources of uncertainty has multiplied. So therefore, I believe we are at an inflection point we, IFOA, and the profession had a great opportunity to herald into a group, into a golden age, if to, collectively we can raise our game. And that is what we plan to do. Uh, because we believe actually it should be relevant, influential, and impactful at our workplace. So therefore, our skill sets has to be modernized to have data science, to have banking to have machine learning to have investments and so forth but it requires curiosity adaptability and the growth mindset as we go along because the skill sets will continue to multiply and we've got to be we have to be much more multidisciplinary and the, and then we want to be influential in the industry and in the society which means that we've got to be systemic in our thinking because all our risk management bundles rest on systems which are working well. If the systems are not working well and not sustainable, we have to speak up according to our actual codes and ask questions. We cannot pretend that we have the answers because we do not. 
uh, but with courage and imagination as well uh, as judgment, you could contribute to the discussion uh, as we go forward. Uh, so, so as you can see, uh, we, we had a great uh, opportunity. We cannot change the world uh, because we are too small, but we can change the way we respond to the world. And with that, you could help with the momentum of change. So with that, I close my discussion. I, I hope I did not speak longer than 25 minutes. Uh, it has been a pleasure uh, to engage with you. I hope I can bring my family uh, to Kenya uh, next year and I hope to meet many of you. Uh, and many of you have met uh, 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 on video uh, and one or two have met in person. Uh, so I wish you all have a very successful conference. And if you have any questions, uh, do email to me or you could follow me on LinkedIn uh, or Instagram, uh, Tan Sui Che, and I have a website too. So you, you can go there for any material which you are interested in. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time and attention. Bye-bye.